know what you can do when you get the skill. Now, man, I just wanted to get y'all, just always make sure that I'm giving out some wisdom on how to live life at another level. But sometimes wisdom is unconventional. Because I may be telling you to do something that somebody else may be telling you to do the opposite of. But here's the one person about wisdom I never want you to forget. Wisdom is proven by the haves and the have-nots. The difference for where I am now, for where I was then, how can you take a quantum leap from then to now? That quantum leap is because I started listening to the haves and I stopped listening to the have-nots. That was the ultimate wisdom. So then if I came to you, Deuce, and I'm like, hey, you single? You have moms, stay there. Stack paper. Don't bring a woman into debt. Don't bring a woman into poverty. Grow your money there. Be debt free there. You got a car, pay it off there. Get your credit right there. Stack your paper there. So that if you do find someone you fall in love with, then you're ready to make sure you're moving her into an experience and not an execution. Because anytime you don't have money, that's what you damn sure moving them into. <laughs> right? And so that's big, big facts. You wanna make sure that that's what you're doing. I mean, y'all look at my life. I do the most uncompromising profession there is. When I say uncompromising, is because you guys have some resolve to be a network marketer. Yeah. Everybody tell you no. Everybody say it won't work. Everybody say this won't happen. Everybody, everybody, everybody. But we never ask ourselves, is the everybody part of the haves or the have-nots? I think that was the difference for me. The difference for me was listening to the people that had because they proved the principles work. Now, once I had proven documentation, Documentation was all I needed. I knew I had the talent. I just needed results. Do you have results from what you're doing? If you have results, do you have my attention? Let me ask you a question. Why is it that people your age are doing things differently than what your parents do? Especially when you take business. One word, time. Things have definitely changed from when you guys were growing up to now. Like technology, we have way more technology than y'all had back in the day. So, so it makes things a whole lot easier to tap into. What about you, dude? Why is it why is it that y'all going the unconventional route more than the traditional route? Uh, like, well, traditional route being college. Yeah, all that other stuff. Yeah, graduating college, you know, getting a degree, and then you got the the other route. The one where you you sitting back, relaxing, making money the easy way instead of busting your back, you know, for thirty odd plus years. <laughs> Let me ask y'all something, because that's a real thing. It is. Have you ever considered how much time people give to things that don't bring results? But those same people, those same people who are locked into that system locked into that way of thinking, know everything. I want you to never forget this statement. And this is what changed life for me. I want you to think about what I'm about to say. Never give a million dollar idea to a one dollar mind. Mm. That is true, straight pressure. That's true. Because um, everyone don't think the way you do. And that's what like, I mean, I ain't trying to brag on myself, but like, I have a lot of people that just can't get with me. Because I'm always thinking of something business minded, something that's going to help me down the road. Not mm -hmm. now. I will never think for now. Think for later. Think for later. But later meaning what? Because later is, for another person, a job is security for them. They're, they're saying that this job is making me think for later. 
where you're saying as an entrepreneur, your vision is different in how you see later. So what's the difference in how they see later and how you see later? Oh, uh, what I would say difference is, I mean, most people, they think that if they've been on the job for a certain long of a period of time, that's what's, the more promotions they get, the more, the bigger they are in the company, the higher up, blah, blah, blah. For me, I'm thinking of how I can employ myself. Yeah. And I take care of my family for later. Yeah. I'm thinking about that. That's what I'm thinking about now. Right. You know, I don't have a, I'm, I'm not married. Uh-huh. I don't have kids. So I'm thinking for then. So, you know, when the time is right, I'll be prepared and ready to go. Yeah. yeah. I already have a goal. I have to be a millionaire by the time I turn 30. And I think I'm on the right track. I'm right. If you walking with me. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. No, seriously. But like same same for my little cousin. I was talking in a conversation with my little cousin right here. And we were talking, I was like, I had to go through a lot of rejection to get here. A lot of people told me no. But no's led to an uncommon lifestyle. My mentor taught me that. My mentor, his name is David. David said this. David Amenitia, he said, to live an uncommon life, you have to have an uncommon work ethic. Ain't nobody like, bam! Yeah, ain't nobody like. So, so then, I had to ask myself, what field was I working in? At the end of the day, would this field be mine? Listen to this wisdom. Or, at the end of the day, am I working so much so the person who owns the field can keep it? So am I working in the field? Are you running the field? Or am I running the field? That's what I had to look at for when I was working. I couldn't leave the field to my kids. So what was I doing it for? Because a wise man leaves an inheritance to his grandchildren. I'm going to give y'all something. I want you to think about this. Them old warrior movies. Yeah. Where they always talked about legacy. I want to be remembered. I want to be remembered. Why do wealthy people always want to be remembered? And poor people die forgotten. Why do wealthy people seek to be remembered? Because they understand the power of a name. There are names that carry reputations and names that come with money. So then, what is the Scott name going to represent? What is the Nelson name going to represent? What is the Scott Enterprise? What is the Nelson Enterprise? What does it mean to be a Scott? No, you gotta hear that. You gotta hear that wisdom. What does it mean to be a Scott, to carry the Scott name? What does it mean to carry the Nelson name? Yeah. Yeah, what does it mean to carry the Spiller name? My name is an enterprise, dude. I want it to be where the Spiller name means when the Spillers show up, deals are done, things, are, but you do that through rejection, humiliation, doing the most uncomfortable things is what makes you rich because discomfort, discomfort equals wealth. The more uncomfortable you are, the more wealthy you become. Because as soon as you become comfortable, somebody else knocks you off your position. You can never be comfortable. You have to always be hungry. The lion in you always has to be growling. Hungry. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you feel like you've uh, gotten to where you need to be? No, man. Not even close. We live very well. There's this thing I go by, Middle Child. You heard that uh, track by J. Cole? Mm-hmm. It's called Middle Child. Mm-hmm. That's me. I'm in between two generations. And, but I've been watching in this particular phase of my life. But here's my point about Middle Child and what J. Cole wrote in that song. I ain't there till my my people came up. Look what LeBron did. Yeah, that's my guy. 
All right, listen, make sure y'all catch this. There's a guy by the name of Bryce Thompson. This guy's like a superhero. We have never seen anything like him before. Bryce Thompson, remember that name. No, the world has never seen anything like him before. But what makes this guy so powerful is that he made sure when he came up, his friends came up. That's how you build. Yeah. You build as a family. Facts. That's why the Italian families had families. The five families. They didn't all have the last name, but they were families. They worked together. And when we as black men catch this, when we as black men can come together and work together and make our own network. Right. Without hating on each other. Yeah. Come on, man. Without trying to stab someone in the back. Yeah, man. Without making a competition. Yeah. yeah. Everything's a competition now. Yeah. You got more than the other one, eh? Right. That's how it is. Why? Yeah, speak on that. Brainwash. 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 Yeah. But you know why why people like that? Can we can we have an honest, open dialogue? Let's do that. I'm finna drop it. You can't help but do what you train to do. If you were trained to betray your fellow brother. So you know. So you, know. See, you we look at our people and say why they're doing it. I look at our people and say, look at psychology, look at philosophy. I say, look at how we've been masterfully trained to look at each other as competition of the enemy. That's what I see. I don't see white. I don't see black. I see psychology. I see philosophy. I see people who are still yet being controlled here. We still don't own nothing, we still don't make nothing, we still don't manufacture nothing, not like we could. We are trillion dollar people in the United States of America and we still being captive because they got us here. What you see now is psychology and philosophy. That's why they betrayed you, my brother. It ain't their fault. They're just doing what every good dog is trying to do. And so if we gonna flip the script, we flip it with us.